camshaft swap on a 3406E or C15 Caterpillar, the first thing you've got to do is get the radiator, charge air cooler, and AC condenser out of the way. The reason for that is that the camshaft won't come out of the top of the engine. It has to come out of either the front or the back. Obviously, you can't take it out of the back because the cab's in the way. So it has to come out of the front. I won't actually take the AC condenser off the truck. I don't want to open the system up because it's working fine. So I'll take it loose from the charge air cooler and fold it back up on top of the engine. And then I'll pull the radiator and charge air cooler off. And then when I get that done, I'll hang the uh, AC condenser by the hoist to hold it up out of my way while I'm swapping the cams out. All right, so here's what this looks like so far. There is the AC condenser laying up on top of the engine and there is the radiator and charge air cooler hanging from the hoist. The next thing I'll do is set that down on the shop floor and then I'll come back and grab a hold of this AC condenser and hang it in here somewhere where it's out of the way as good as I can get it. And then once I get that done, I'm gonna come up here and pull the fan hub off. As you can see, it'll have to come off in order to get the peanut cover off. And I'm gonna be changing this fan hub out for a different one that I've got. That one's missing some friction material in there. I am also gonna change the crank damper out. I've got a brand new Vibratec crank damper to go on this. I'll show you how to get these crank dampers apart from the pulleys. There's more than one way you can do this, but this is the way I normally do it. It's quick and easy. So you just block it up to where the pulley will go down in between the blocks and let it hang there by the damper. And then you take another big square block that will go and fit in the recessed area of that damper like that on top of the the part of the pulley that protrudes through. And then you take the BFH. I'll let you figure out what that stands for. And you smack this block on top and knock the pulley out of there. Okay, the radiator and charge air coolers over there on the ground. AC condensers hanging up here out of the way. I've got the fan hub off and the crank damper and crank pulley off. I won't put any of that back on until after I do the cam swap. So I'm pretty much ready to get into the engine now. The only other thing I'm gonna take off is the intake. So I'll take it off here where it comes out of the cab on both sides and then up here at the front. Get that all out of the way. And when I get that done, I'll be ready to pull the valve covers off and then pull the peanut cover off. I've got the intake piping off and out of the way. That's the way I normally do it. You can just take three clamps off this way and the whole thing's gone. Peanut cover's off. I got all the little Torx head bolts out without stripping any out or breaking any of them off. None of them were very happy about coming out, but they all finally did. So I've got the engine pinned at top dead center compression number one. So the next thing I'm gonna do is pull the cam gear off, which just consists of these six bolts right here. And then that gear will come off. When I get that done, I'll show you what's behind the cam gear and keep moving along. All right, I've got the cam gear off. All there is to this is a retaining ring and an adapter. So the retaining ring is the part with the three bolts in it, and then the adapter is the piece in the center with the dowel sticking out of it. So to take this apart, all you do is pull those three bolts out, the ring comes off, and the adapter is what times the camshaft to the cam gear. So it's just sandwiched in between the two, and when you pull the retaining ring off, the adapter will just slip off the camshaft. There's the retaining ring and the three bolts. In this case, the adapter doesn't want to come off the camshaft very easily. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. So 
so that's fine. I'll just pull it all out together. Just leave the adapter on the camshaft, pull it out of the engine, and then take the adapter off the camshaft once I get it out. It's way easier that way than trying to get it off right now. Okay, I've got the valve covers off, the Jake housings off, and the rocker arms and shafts out. So I am finally ready to pull the old camshaft out of here. Here's all the top end parts. Jake housings, rocker arms, rocker shafts, and hardware. The old camshaft's gone. So from this point forward, I'm putting it back together instead of taking it apart. That's a good thing. You can see what I was talking about with this adapter now. I just left it on the camshaft and pulled it all out together. And then gave it a few taps with a rubber hammer and it'll come right off. Okay, once I get three journals in, it's okay to let it hang on its own there. I won't let it hang with any less than three journals inside the head. Got the cam gear back on and torqued. Those bolts torqued to 180 plus or minus 30 foot pounds. Next thing I'll do is put the peanut cover on and then I'm all done with the front gear train. The Marine Cam matches a lot better to a set of 55s or 59s. That's nothing new. Pretty much know exactly what they'll do and what to expect there. But I know there are guys that run the Marine Cam against a set of 57 injectors. I've just never done it myself, so I'm anxious to see exactly how well it works and pull load with it and all that. Best aftermarket equipment you can add to a Peterbilt right there. Quick update, I've got the new Vibratec crank damper on, fan hub swapped out, the belts are on and tight, the overhead is run, the engine is 100% together. So the only thing I'll have to do now is get the radiator and charge air cooler back on the truck, get all the hoses and air intake pipes put back on, a few other little things and it'll be ready to go. See if it's gonna run or if it's gonna sling parts everywhere.